Hello, this is Molly Reamer with Bridget's Grove and 30 Days of Goddess, and I am still at the beach, and I decided I wanted to make a quick video about the decks that I have traveled with. I thought that would be kind of interesting. I like to see the decks that people are using, and so I thought I would make a quick video about the decks that I have with me on this trip. We stay at the beach for a month each January, and uh, the it costs approximately the same amount as one week in the summer to go to the beach for a month in January, and so that's what we do. And the decks that I have chosen to have with me are not necessarily like travel decks or things that I have. Um, they're they're new. Most of them are new to me, and that's why I have them with me, not because they're like the decks that I recommend for traveling or anything like that. So I have woman runes with me, of course, because. I use woman runes every single day, and so I have my woman runes deck, my well, my well worn, well used woman runes deck. So that one's with me. I do consider that to be a travel deck, and then I have also my Thirty Days of Goddess Daily Practice deck, which I do also continue to be a travel deck because it's split up with prompts, prayers, and practices and can help support and encourage you on a, in a daily practice on a goddess centered path. So that one is with me. Then the other ones that are with me are all new to me. And that is, oh, actually I'm not quite accurate. <laughs> the other one that I have with me that is not new to me is the illustrated herbiary by Maya Toll. I have this cute little wrap that Carmen from the Creative Spirit Circle made for me. And this is what Maya's books come with oracle cards in a pocket in the back. And, uh, but then after you punch them out, they don't really fit there very well. So I have one in a, I have them in a little pouch instead in that little wrap. So I really like Maya's books and her illustrated tomes in this series. And so I have this one with me because I find that it's really a nice way to shape monthly content for my Goddess Magic community on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash goddess magic. And also to give me like monthly thematic herbal encouragement. So I find it a really nice deck to use. And so that is the other one that is with me that is not new to me, but is a familiar deck that I intentionally chose to be here with me. The other ones I'm not familiar with, and so sometimes sometimes you discover you don't really connect with the deck, and then you're like, oh, too bad I dragged it all this way, <laughs> but this is what I have. And so I have the this new Creative Flame Oracle by my online friend Patricia Ballantyne, who I've known online for quite a while, and this is her new Oracle. And so this isn't really like a deck review video. It's more of a, just a look at what I have with me. And so this deck she created on her own with her own photography and made cards that she then worked with over the course of a year and came up with a deck based on like a personal. So it was a personal Oracle card project first and then became a deck that she offered with uh, for a special edition pre-order like kind of testing sort of um, limited edition kind of test deck sort of run. And so it has cards in it, moon cards. There's a special art card for each moon. And then the other cards with her own photography. And so there is a, a homegrown quality to a deck like this with somebody's own photographs that I appreciate and have been finding this an interesting deck to work with, with somebody's, you know, own home, homemade work in that way. And the book is very, it's pretty simple and she leaves the interpretations really up to you in many ways, though there's a prayer that goes with each of the moon cards. And then she did include the PDF files as a bonus with the order. And so I, of course, made myself, excuse me, I only have one hand, I didn't bring my tripod with me. And so I only have one hand 
with which to film and get stuff out. So that's a little silly and I apologize for that. I almost didn't make the video because of it and then I thought, oh well. <laughs> so because she provided the PDF, I of course printed it out in this quarter size kind of format so that I can then use the little images and descriptions in my 30 Days of Goddess prayer book for this month. So I've put in, I sometimes I get the same card or I get the moon cards instead. And so um, I'm not finding one actually right now that I have used. Just a second, I thought I had an example. Ah, so for example, that day I put in the little description from the card as I'm getting to know that deck. There's another one in here too. And then on the full moon, maybe I skipped past that. On the full, aha, here's where it is. The full moon, my full moon page here opens up in two ways. And so I put her January full moon art card in there with the prayer. And I'm planning to do that for the rest of this year with, on the moons, use that, those, those um, extras from her thing. And that was one of the PDFs that was included was kind of a coloring page version of the moon cards. Okay, so then the more traditionally published decks that I have with me are this Sacred Cycles Oracle by Jill Pyle of Goddess Provisions. And this one I got because I literally, I just love the art. There's something about the art on it that just captures me completely. And I don't like care what else the deck has to offer essentially because I love the art on it so much. And so this deck is very kind of body centered and so though they're very clear that it's a pro it, it's not only for use by cycling people and that also it is available and accessible to anybody who has a cycle it's not specifically like women only and it also um, but also there's there's broader messages included so you do not have to be a cycling person to still find wisdom here in this imagery I do think that it's probably most comfortable imagery for cycling people and particularly cycling people who identify as women. But they are very clear in the guidebook and they're very clear in the material and the messages that it, it, it really is a deck that's for anyone and can be used by anyone. And so I appreciate that inclusivity of the messaging that goes with it. And anyway, the art for it is just I don't, I don't know what it is about it, but I would practically frame all of these pieces. I wish I had these as digital <laughs> that I could print out and put into, um, put, put into my prayer book because I would use it all the time. It's so, there's just, I just love the art. It's so great. So really pleased with that one. I had actually bought it on sale when Hay House was having like an end of year clearance sale. And then I also bought a Goddess Provisions box that was like kind of an extra. I, I had a subscription to them for a long time and then I stopped because I was kind of letting stuff pile up and wasn't using it. Not It was a great box. It was my favorite subscription box, but I just had basically spent a lot of money and wasn't always using everything. So they had kind of a bundle, a year-end bundle of like leftovers from past boxes. And so I bought that for myself for a solstice present. This cloth underneath came from that box too. And wouldn't you know, <laughs> the deck that was in my like surprise box was also the Sacred Cycles Oracle, which I took to be kind of almost like you know, a little bit of a sign, like, yes, I am supposed to work with it. I'd also gotten a copy for my friend Amy and had given it to her at our winter solstice ritual. And so it's really been popping up for me. I bought, there's a companion journal that goes with it that I also got. And uh, so anyway, this card is definitely, this deck is showing up for me a lot. So, and even like, look at that cute little, I just love the, I just love the art making me so happy. Okay. So then I also have with me this African goddess rising oracle. And this one I got intentionally because I'm not very familiar with African goddesses. And it really only, just like a lot of white people out there, this has only come into my come to my attention in the last two or three years about how little I have learned, how little attention I have paid to whether 
the teachers and authors and priestesses and writers and speakers and business leaders and coaches that I am listening to, how often are those people black people, black women, people of color, and how often are they all white? And it's really been highlighted for me in the last couple of years, like how white my work world has been and my influence, my spiritual influences have been and the resources that I draw upon. And it wasn't like I set out intentionally, like I'm going to only learn from white people. But like many white people, that is what I, when I started to pay attention, that's what I realized. Like, wow, like my world is very white and very filled with like white voices and white influences, white influences and white speakers, etc. And I know there's issues with cultural appropriation as well that make you concerned as a white person in particular about like you don't want to appropriate African goddesses or inappropriately like get into terrain that doesn't belong to you, so to speak, culturally. And that's a European colonialist legacy, you know, like there is see something, take something kind of. And so that I think can sometimes inhibit us from learning things from people who are black, indigenous people of color. When, when we are white people, it can inhibit us from learning from other groups because we feel kind of nervous about taking something that's not ours or whatever. And so then you're like, then you almost kind of shut the door on other voices, other perspectives and other influences. And then your world becomes super white. And, and sometimes it's just super white because of internalized racism and kind of by default. And sometimes it's super white because you're almost afraid to branch out or that you will be somehow making a mistake. And so anyway, I got this African rising or African goddess rising oracle because I was like, wow, I don't want my, I don't need, you know, my decks don't need to be all white. And the goddesses that I work with and, you know, listen to and learn from don't have to be all white, just like the priestesses and the teachers and the coaches and the business school leaders. I've really intentionally widened my range of who I learned from over the last couple of years. And there are, you know, some powerful and amazing black leaders and teachers and coaches and business people out there who are amazing to learn from. And we sh as white people need to make sure that we are listening and participating and showing up with our dollars in um, showing up with our dollars, not showing up with our voices taking over, but showing up with our dollars and our support and our encouragement and our um, purchases in our interest and our learning. Not in a consuming way, like we're going to consume people, but that we're going to pay them for their work and listen to what they have to say. So that is without being in center stage or and without stealing information or practices. So anyway, just acknowledging that that's kind of like a complex terrain a little bit for white colonialist people like me. But look at this cool art. It's got some good, a lot of decks that include a multicultural influence still have a whitewashed type of appearance to a lot of the cards. And so the goddesses will kind of be, you know, sort of pretty, um, you know, generic, kind of generic people. And maybe they'll, you know, have just changed the skin color basically. And this deck still has a little bit of that polished look where the characters or the characters the cards are very you know they're very lovely and they're very buxom and kind of have an idealized female kind of form so rather than being there's not a lot of body diversity in the deck I notice and there's a little bit of that super thin large-breasted kind of idealization type of forming however still has interesting content and it's not you know we've got some age variation we've got some body variation but that's one of the things that sometimes happens in goddess decks is they're very that's one of the reasons i like jo uh, joanna powell kelbert's tarot decks is there's a lot of diversity in the in the ages and shapes of people too it's not just racial a, a diversity, but like physical diversity as well. And that's also important. So that we're not surrounded. Oh, okay. 
I suddenly thought I wasn't recording anymore. I got a text and I was like, oh no, but it is still recording. Anyway, it's important that we're surrounded by all kinds of imagery and not just limited. So on the same note, I got this Earthcraft Oracle. And this one I got because I really like Julia Diaz's work. She wrote The Altar Within and I follow her on social media and I liked The Altar Within. Quite, um, I listened to it on audio. It takes a little bit of adjusting to the to the formatting or the style, the stylistic tone choices of the book. Um, but I appreciate her. She's, she's an indigenous uh, Bruja practitioner and she has, um, oops, I forget. I don't know very much about the the artist but anyway I appreciate Juliet Diaz's work and she's she's very focused on like decolonization of spirituality and decolonial decolonializing spiritual practices and again is one of those voices that is important to listen to and learn from not to step over or onto and um, so this one caught my eye because of both because of the author because I respect her work and then also because of the art because it just has this flowing fluid kind of isn't it interesting like I just really find the art style compelling very colorful very active there's a lot of movement in these cards like you just feel something from them and I feel like that's important with decks like you need to feel something from them so I have uh, so far I've only been drawing cards from this one and just kind of looking at them I haven't dived in that deeply I'm just kind of getting to know it a little bit but isn't it isn't it there's a visual there's a real visual compellingness to it as well so I got that one for my other friend um, at our winter solstice ritual too so we will be exploring that deck together. Anyway, the, these, oh wait, I have a couple more resources to share, but these are the decks that I've been looking at, exploring, thinking about, spending some time with, getting to know. So primarily these, those uh, three that I talked about and the Creative Flame Oracle, so four, and then my own Woman Runes and 30 Days of Goddess Daily Practice. Those are like my daily support tools. I really think one of the gifts of both Woman Runes and 30 Days of Goddess is that daily support. Like these are wonderful to do bigger readings kind of with or, or deep dives or more extensive layouts. And then the 30 Days of Goddess Daily Companion and Woman Runes are just really great daily, you know, soul maintenance, daily check-in uh, support. And I forgot that I also have a uh, cowrie shell oracle with me. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to open this. This came from Alyssa in our Creative Spirit Circle group in a fundraiser. And I was instantly interested in it, but I don't really know anything about cowrie shell divination. And again, that's one of those things that you don't really want to be like appropriating from other people. Um, but you also don't want to be closing the door on people either. So, so it, I have this cowrie shell divination since we're at the beach. I figured it would be, you can see the water out there a little bit. I thought it would be a nice one to have with me. And then I have the Sea Witch book. She sent with it. It doesn't really go with it. It's not specifically attached to the cowrie shell divination, but there. So I have that with me as well. I'd created my own little seashell oracle guide a while ago that I sent out, I think to patrons with patron kits from the Goddess Magic people. And I'm like, I should get that back out again and look at the seashell oracle that I had worked with and come up with back in the day. It's been several years since I did that and I haven't, I haven't revisited it. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside. And so then my kids, my big boys, I have a 19 year old and a 16 year old, my big boys, and they got me this color your own tarot kit for solstice. And I was so thrilled with it. I really, it really touched me to receive and I've been very excited about it. I have my own Story Goddess Oracle cards, in, a couple of them in here that I am working on coloring. The Story Goddess Oracle cards are new this year and are a patron benefit for 
members of the Goddess Magic community on Patreon, which I already mentioned, and I'll link to it before below, but it's Patreon dot com slash Bridget's or slash goddess magic patreon.com slash goddess magic and you get a weekly color coloring card to build your own story goddess oracle over the course of this year I'm super super thrilled about that and very excited to offer it and I'm having so much fun working on them so anyway this color your own deck has uh, kind of this art nouveau style here's one that I did has art nouveau style I did not do the back on that one of card and there's one for all of them and it's going to take me a long time <laughs> to color all this but it also is a really informative full color book about tarot in general and that I found kind of a nice bonus too I didn't realize the book would be as as comprehensive and detailed as it is and so and this is just a nice there's just something really nice about this set like isn't that cute? nice it's very um fulfilling to look at. So I also have with me Oracle Card Journal. I'm obviously very Oracle Card-ish this, on this particular trip. I, I think I have a lot of decks at home, but I brought quite a few with me, kind of with the idea of intentionally diving into some more of them. And so I actually haven't worked with this book at all yet, but it was on clearance. And so I got it and I am... I do Oracle card journaling every day anyway, uh, so I kind of don't necessarily need this one, but the price was right. And so I went ahead and got it. And then I brought it with me. I probably should have left it at home actually, nothing against the book, but I just already have other ways of journaling about Oracle things that I do. And then last but not least, I have with me the Oracle Creator book. I saw this in a picture from someone, we did a gift, an Elfster gift exchange in the Creative Spirit Circle Facebook group. And I saw someone in the group had given this book to somebody else in the group. And I was like, what? And so I immediately bought it and ordered it in time to have it with me on our trip. Because I am working on the Story Goddess Oracle. I've already published other Oracle decks. And so I did find that nothing, there was nothing particularly like new or earth shaking to me in this book. But it's really visually stunning. It's very visually compelling. And it's just a cool dang book. It is a cool book. And so I recommend it from cool, from a coolness perspective, uh, primarily. So it didn't, it, there was nothing earth shaking or, you know, super enlightening to me about uh, Oracle deck publication or, or resources per se, but, but the visual look of it is just super, it's a cool book. It's a cool book and it is very thorough and interesting. And so if you don't have experience with Oracle deck publishing, you probably could still get a lot out of it. I did not find that I personally like got a whole bunch of earth shaking insights, but I it certainly enjoyed reading it and liked the visual experience of moving through it. So it was a good one. So I have that with me as well. So lots of Oracle card stuff. That is why I felt like want making this video because I was like, wow, I have so many things with me that it seems like it's the right time to do a little overview and to share those with other people. So I hope that was useful for you. Feel free to drop a comment and let me know which Oracle decks you are working with this year. I think a lot of us in goddess oriented worlds are very interested in oracle decks and using them in different ways. I personally don't have a tendency to do elaborate spreads. I pretty much do single card draws, though I have experience with doing bigger, um, deeper work. I like things I can just grab one and, and or an assortment. So I will often pick one from each of these decks and from the daily practice deck and the woman runes deck every day. And I just like getting the little the little nudge from them, the little, it gives me a little pause to say, oh, you know, this is something to pay attention to. This is something to think about. So I don't necessarily use them in like a deep dive kind of, you know, soul guidance kind of way, but more of a, a daily check-in, a little nudge, a little um, reminder, a little encouragement, that kind of thing, which is why I'm more partial to Oracle decks than to tarot decks, because I do like just the little message as opposed to like complex symbolism. And that's okay. People like different things. So anyway, feel free to drop a comment and let me know which decks you are digging into, whether you are deep diving or daily drawing or any mix of the, uh, the, of any mix there. I would like to hear about it. So thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. And, um, yeah, may this year hold a lot of insight for you. Bye-bye.